Hello, I'm Philip Duncan with your March Climate Watch update brought to you by ruralweather.co.nz. And let's take a look at the 1st of March. We've got a lot of high pressure. That's uh, what you see in the brighter shading here, the yellows and the whites. So a lot of high pressure tracking along the south of Australia and over towards New Zealand. Now we do have a bit of a break in it. The darker shading down here shows low pressure. We've got a storm developing down in the Southern Ocean and that is coming up for the 3rd and the 4th of March. But then it goes and more high pressure out of the Indian Ocean and south of Australia tracks on in. So yes, there is a little bit of a, a blip in the matrix for the start of the month with that storm. But I think afterwards you're going to see things starting to calm down quite a bit. This is the El Nino setup. So tracking along El Nino in this box to the top here. Uh, and as you can see, it is expected to drop back to neutral in the next couple of months. So we're on the end part of El Nino, but as you can see, it's not a straightforward line. It kind of has gone back up again to some degree. We're certainly noticing in the tropics uh, that it's gone quiet. There were several low pressure systems up there just a week ago. Now there's almost none. And that's because we're seeing more high pressure north of New Zealand expanding further up there as well. So what does this mean for the months ahead? Well, the all the various models from around the world, you've got Australia, Europe, Japan, France, uh, America, UK, and then in the bottom, the mean uh, modeling, showing all of them sort of condensed into one. So we're still leaning into El Nino as we go through March. Jump a couple of months to May, still slightly on that side to El Nino, but as you can see, it's pretty much gone. So that means, that our autumn weather pattern will be enhanced. I said this back in spring, El Nino makes spring and autumn like a hat on a hat. So we're going to see a little more wind and a little more high pressure, I think, and a little more warmth as a result of El Nino being around. But as we go through into winter, it fades away and you start to notice the modeling leaning more towards La Nina. So you're going to hear that more and more in the news. It's going to be an exhausting year. I mean, this happened last year with El Nino. It was just months and months and months of news coverage leading up to it. We're not doing that. We're just mentioning that it's on the way. But the main focus is neutral. Neutral is coming back. That's a good thing. Means more variety, usually for our part of the world. So let's make sense of the highs and lows going into this month. Week one, that is starting off today, the 1st of March. So the red boxes show high pressure. So coming out of the Indian Ocean, south of Australia, no wonder they're getting so many fires and catastrophic fire risks in Victoria and spreads over to the New Zealand area. Now with all the low pressure down here, fairly uniformed at the moment, but you can see the big windy westerlies that are blowing through. That's what I mean by El Nino enhances autumn, a hat on a hat. I mean, autumn's already windy with the westerlies. This just makes it a little windier and that encourages drier weather in the east and hotter weather as well. Now, this doesn't show you, of course, the storm coming in for Monday and Tuesday, the first Monday and Tuesday of March. Let's go to the end of next week. So that's Friday of next week. That's the start of the second week and high pressure moves back into the New Zealand area. The storm is down here to the southeast of us. It's moved away. So it briefly came up and then it goes back down. So what I'm trying to say is high pressure, it is dominating, it continues on and it's fairly uniformed where you're sort of seeing it like a sandwich where low pressure down here, high pressure in the middle, low pressure back up here in the tropics. And by week three, again, no change. So this is really locking in what we said was likely to happen last year, that as we get to the end of summer, the start of autumn, El Nino is likely to be most noticeable. And that's by this bigger block of high pressure and fewer chances of rain being able to get through. Could be some low pressure up here, a possible cyclone. I mean, I wouldn't lock that in this far out, but this is a low pressure zone to the north. So there might be another tropical cyclone forming up to our north. But this encourages the easterlies into Queensland and the westerlies into New Zealand with high pressure coming through us. So what does that mean rainfall wise? Well, here is the first seven days. This is mostly from that storm coming in around the, uh, well, it's sort of coming in on Sunday the 3rd, Monday the 4th, Tuesday the 5th, around that kind of period of time. I hope I've got those days right. Um, and so, yeah, sorry, the 4th and the 5th, the start of next week. And so you're certainly seeing a bit of rain in these boxes. That's up to the 80 to 100 millimeter mark. But these eastern areas, they're mostly dry. Down at the bottom of the scale, one to five millimeters. Now here's the interesting thing put it on for the rest of uh, the second week and a little bit more than that. It's about 16 days worth of rain and it barely changes from the first week. What does that mean? 
it means that that storm that's coming in around Monday and Tuesday will drop most of that rain. Once it's gone, high pressure dominates, not much change in the maps, maybe a little bit more coming in for Fiordland and Southland. Most places on that map are looking fairly dry, like Marlborough and Wellington, Hawke's Bay, and then also Eastern Coromandel, Northland and Auckland. None of those places seeing a lot of rain. Now, there is a little bit of hope, silver linings and all that stuff. As these highs come on through, the reason why we're getting a storm at the start of the week next week um, is because you get a break in the highs. Once one high moves on, there's an area of vulnerability, and that can allow Southern Ocean storms to roar on up and sometimes tropical lows to drop down. The Coriolis effect, the way the Earth spins, brings these lows that makes them want to go southeast. That's why you're seeing these arrows. They kind of come in between the highs. In New Zealand, they line up on the western side of the country, whether that's coming out of the Southern Ocean or out of the Tasman Sea. So that just shows you, while the next half of the month is pretty dry in the New Zealand area, that westerly flow is starting to show up. And that's a classic sign of El Nino for us. So what does it mean for the rest of the month? Well, our data that we've got, the long range stuff that we've got, certainly suggests that the North Island and the top of the south and the western side as well leans drier than they normally would be for this time of the year and it stays wet down here. That is very similar to the weather pattern we had in January and February, so no surprises there. What does it mean though going further into the rest of the season? This is all of autumn. It shows rain coming back, fingers crossed. So March is a dry month. Hopefully April will start to see a break in those highs and with El Nino fading out, hopefully by May, that really does encourage some better chances of rainmakers coming out of the Southern Ocean, the Tasman Sea, or the tropics. Might still be dry though, in some of these central and eastern areas and the top of the country. Now soil moisture wise, this is quite interesting. Last year compared to this year. How wet was the North Island last year and even some parts of the South? This year, the red means dry, and so we're seeing some really dry spells or spots, I should say, as far as soil moisture is concerned, especially Auckland and Northland, East Cape, uh, the lower half of the South, sorry, lower half of the North Island, Nelson, Marlborough, and a big chunk of Canterbury and parts of central Otago. So those are the dry spots at the moment. From a marine point of uh, view, we've got a slight marine heat wave carrying on over here. It's a moderate one, uh, and a little bit around Coromandel Peninsula. Great if you want to go swimming, um, but yeah, we don't really like seeing too much in the way of marine heat waves. But at this stage, that's looking pretty good around New Zealand at the moment. And temperature wise on land, half a degree warmer for the next three months ahead. It doesn't mean it will be always warm. There'll be cold blasts in between. You can still break records as well for being colder than average. But overall, it should lean warmer than average. And that's probably due to El Nino encouraging more westerly winds our way. And that is all for Climate Watch. Please download our new app if you haven't done so already. It is the largest and, uh, well, I think the most accurate, we know it is the most accurate globally, um, weather app in the country. It is, has got more weather forecast data on it than NIWA and Met Service combined, and it's free to download. But there are also paid alerts within it. So if you want to set the criteria for your farm or orchard or property, you want to know when the wind or temperatures are going to get to a certain amount, and even rainfall as well, we've got you covered. And the Met Service warnings, they get pushed to your phone too if you sign up to our paid alerting system. That is all from me. Have a great March, and we look forward to our next Climate Watch update when April kicks off.